it's never going to be fully safe for anybody. That bus is the bus that makes me fearful of my life. It's stuff that you don't want and it just continuously happens. I can get away, but when you're on transit, you can't. You're stuck. Closed doors, you're literally trapped. My name is Amber Khanna. My name is Kristen. John Irwin. I find that young girls a lot get targeted on transit, especially women that are sitting alone. Um, maybe it's just because we look like the easier target. The 36, the Finch bus, never felt safe once. That bus is the bus that makes me fearful of my life. I know when I used to live in Etobicoke around Roxdale, there is the 36 bus, which is, which is pretty much the worst bus. Um, and there's always something that's going to happen. You're always going to get some unwanted attention. Um, I think it's a statistic, I'm not sure, but I'm thinking it depends on the nature of it. You know, there's the YRT transit. That transit, I do feel safe on, very much so. It's very clean, the population is not that dense, so whenever you're on the public transit, you know, there's very few people on the bus, so it's never really crowded. What does feel unsafe is a TTC. I don't have my driver's license or anything, so I fully depend on transit. It doesn't really feel safe, to be honest. You know, after, like, you get this, sometimes you get this unwanted attention from people or people look at you differently and you might get this uncomfortable feeling. Um, I guess there's like a lot of stories that I've had that kind of makes me not want to take transit. Uh, right away I did notice it. Well, I guess the initial fear I had was more a stigmatized fear of, you know, the location that I was passing through, which was Jane and Finch. There was a situation, I went to a boat party with my friend and we are coming back from the, the boat party and I wore this, not even a low cut shirt, just a shirt with leggings and boots and this lady across from me kept calling me a trollop. Not your fault, not because you look like a victim, but predators hunt who they can catch, right? Wolves take off the baby deer because they can catch the baby deer. They don't chase down the adult moose that's gonna hoof it to death. They take down the baby if they can. So it's the nature of predators. Hunters take who they can. I was listening to her. I kept pretending that I didn't hear her and she started getting louder and louder and screaming in my face to the point that I tried getting up to get off my stop and she was like, I guess this is my stop too. And my friend grabbed me and pulled me back to the subway and we got off at the next stop and to make sure that we didn't bump into the woman. As and that's when you look at the language in the buses now, the signs, right? This is where something happened to somebody. So that person that wants to do something in public, that's part of the thrill in it for some. Um, and there's other situations. I. This one's kind of funny, but also like kind of uncomfortable. So this guy sat in front of me and my friend and he just kept staring at me and I got really uncomfortable. And then he decided to start singing Red Hot Chili Peppers to my boobs. And uh, <laughs> even though at the time, it, now looking back, it's funny, but it was really uncomfortable. And so I got up and we just moved to a different spot and this guy uh, continued to follow us. Some of me not getting, having difficulty with it is because it's, it's as well, it's like being a tourist. If you show up on the bus in some in country that clearly you have money, you've got a big knapsack and you've got all the fancy gear and the people you're riding the bus with are, you know, they're struggling, they're getting by, they get a normal life, you look like a target. People need to be educated on topics and a lot of the times they're not. A majority of the times and even if uh, the education is there the talk is there you know when you mentioned uh, mental health there's there's programs like that let's talk which it kind of normalizes the conversation no I think there's assholes that ride who are predators who are looking to pick on somebody and they pick on who they can so you go wherever you think you'll find a target that's manageable for you but I definitely believe that if people 
we're educated more and we're taught what consent is and how to truly be uh, consenting. been groped many times before on transit, uh, specifically, you know, around um, Bloor Street while taking the, te while taking the subway. Um, around there, it's really bad during rush hour because, you know, people are just crammed on there, as I was mentioning earlier, you know, so people take advantage of that. And as it gets closer and crammed in tighter? You're basically stuck, like literally squished up to people like this. Like, and people are just grabbing you, touching you, doing whatever they want because some people are doing it innocently, they accidentally bump into you, whereas others take advantage of it and that's when I don't feel safe. Um, they, and that's, so that's where we see what has gone on for years that we don't see except that somebody sees being groped on a bus or a subway, the amount that that happens and is unreported, that's, that's significant. And it's somebody grab, just touching or grabbing somebody that we recognize inappropriately socially, but it's, it's groping them, it's sexual assault. That stuff has gone on as long as there's been people in closed spaces. But I think, again, the social media stuff is raising awareness, so you've got other people who might respond now. See advertisements now in transit. You know, this person got assaulted here. This person got called out for, you know, just being, you know, loving a woman or a man and they are the same sex. You've got more sense of people who will say, hey, you can't, or take a picture, or... So that predator starts to realize they might be vulnerable. I think that it would alleviate a lot of the problems in our society, and just in general, conversation. All I have to say is that if you have a moment where you feel unsafe, unprotected, like you're at risk, or like your thoughts are spiraling because of an event, please seek professional help. There are counselors, therapists, people that will work with you um, and work with you to just kind of overcome that traumatic event. You do bad things, people are gonna tell. You're not gonna get away. We're not just gonna stand acquiesce, like ignore it or pretend it didn't happen. It's pointing out, it's point, it's, so it shifts the, the mindset of that potential offender to, I can get away with this with, ooh, the risk of getting caught is heightened and therefore they won't. The one thing I have to say is that if you are victimized and if you did deal with the harassment and assault and it's affecting you in some minor way at all, please seek professional help, please. It's not me or you. If you grab one of us, you're grabbing all of us. I kind of wait for the day where I can go out in public and not be scared of getting talked to inappropriately or getting touched inappropriately. I think it's attainable, but it feels like in today's world it's not because maybe it's because I'm a female, um, but it feels like a lot of times I can't be respected in public. Maybe they look at me differently. And I think it's not okay, obviously not, not for anybody to have to deal with it. Um, but it's kind of sad that I have to say I, I hope for that day. You know, why isn't it not now?